Hello and welcome to this video. We're going to cover Summer Split and the most common champion matchups that occurred during it. Um, I promised this video yesterday. Uh, it's taken the last two days to kind of accumulate all the win rates of all the patches for Summer. Um, luckily, I have Spring still saved, so when I do the cumulative after Worlds is done, um, it'll all be together. But these are the most common matchups in each role. This gives us a vibe of what was Summer. You know what, you know, in some of this, you, you may have forgotten that, oh, yeah, that right, that's right, that, that matchup was really important earlier on in the split or throughout the entire split under the radar, you know, never actually being the top matchup, but being consistently there. Um, down in the description, you'll find three links, Twitter, Discord, and uh, YouTube memberships. Twitter, uh, follow me there, self-explanatory. Discord, uh, join us, we BS about League all day, pretty much every day. 90% of the time, uh, there is a space for activities uh, category where you can do predictions when we do worlds, um, pick which we have going on, as well as a player pool system where we have a tournament style thing going on where you pick five players and uh, they accumulate points. Um, kind of like fantasy, but, but not really, and there's no real prize at the end besides bragging rights, but it's still something to do. Um, YouTube memberships, $3 support me, keep the channel alive, you get a badge in the comment section, $10 you get extra content. That includes my predictions for who I think will win in a video or a post form, as well as NFL football, American football content, um, and fantasy American football content. So, uh, most common matchups of summer, in top lane we had Gwen versus Nar. Um, Gwen, not very common at the end, right? But Gwen versus Nar happened 71 times. Nar taking it 61% of the time, which is sizable because you think about it, um, it's 71 matches. When I did these videos all throughout summer and spring, we only really did matchups that occurred at least 10 times, right? Because not all, not many matchups occurred double digits and that was the best we could really work with. But 71 matchups... I mean, yes, there's thousands upon thousands of variables. Player diff, jungle diff, itemization, runization. Um, well, runization isn't a word, but ruin choice. Um, team choice, blue side, red side. When you picked it in the draft, you know, how's the player on the champion specifically? Um, you know, the list goes on and on. But after 71 matches, NAR won it 61% of the time. Um, that was NAR's strongest matchup. Um, afterwards, we have GP. GP would beat NAR 59% of the time. By the way, 43 top laners picked throughout summer. Um, Sejuani versus NAR. Sejuani would have the edge. GP versus Gwen. You see here? So we had clearly 71, 59, 57, and then a big drop-off. To 26 times Gangplank versus Gwen. Gwen winning 58% of the time. And 26 times Sejuani versus Orn. Sejuani winning 54% of the time. So you can assume that's when NAR is banned. Um, not when players don't want to play it because NAR was pretty much the easy blind pick and then you pick whatever you want into it. Um, and now the thing is, though, you look at this, you say to yourself, well, if you left GP and Sej up, um, picking NAR, our first pick actually may have been kind of sus. Um, more so if Gangplank was up than Sejuani. Sejuani 53-47. I mean, in 57 matchups, that's a handful of times. But 59% were starting to get into some territory here where, oh, does it, I mean, GP clearly has the edge, right? Um, I was surprised by Orn over Sejuani. Orn seems like the easy pick for people. Um, and that was the um, tank matchup. If someone picked Sej, other person picked Orn into it, and vice versa. Um, I'm just happy that's not in top lane anymore. I do not want to see Sejuani versus Orn at Worlds. In the jungle, the handshake was Viego versus Wukong for a very long time. Um, at the end of the split, Viego's pretty much out of the meta. But it was, like Gwen, very common in the beginning. Um, Trundle versus Wukong, 40 less times. So like like I said, another drop off here. Viego versus Wukong, Viego drops out, Trundle took its place. Then we see Lee Sin versus Viego, which kind of stuck its nose in there for a while. Um, for probably two thirds of the split, Lee Sin was relevant. And then at the end, we have Poppy versus Trundle and Poppy versus Wukong over the last month, month and a half of the split. Um, a lot of Poppy, Poppy becoming first pick or ban. Um, and Trundle also. Um, and you see here, they're actually very close by the end. Um, Wukong only 51%. So we're having a coin flip over 107 matchups. I think it was separated by five, not even five. It was only 1%. So like two or three matchups, which is pretty crazy to think about, right? 
Um, Trundle versus Wukong, very close. Lee Sin versus Viego, I think it was only it was 31 to 30, so really coin flip. Poppy versus Trundle was coin flip. Poppy versus Wukong was pretty much coin flip. So the jungle, depending on how nerfs and buffs worked, really over the whole thing itself was a coin flip. Um, which, I mean, would be surprising because throughout it we see, oh, well, X player, I mean, X champion is, is OP or this or that. And it's like, well, over the whole entire thing, actually, it looks like these champions were not, um, at least in these matchups. Obviously, 34 junglers picked, so uh, there were matchups that were pretty lopsided, but they don't end up on here. They didn't happen commonly, and for good reason. If it's lopsided, no one's going to want to pick into it, right? Um, the most lopsided matchup actually ends up being Lucian versus Aphelios. In mid lane, it was the Ari show. In the beginning, Ari was banned, but halfway through, teams realized, hey, we're just going to leave Ari up and pick what we want into it. We had 38 different mid laners picked. Lissandra versus Ari 51 times. Talia versus Ari 48. Azir 45. Silas 39. All of this into Ari. And then Silas versus Azir 38 times. So, what do we think about this? Well, looking at the red champions here, um, Three out of the four matchups, Ari actually lost over the aggregate. Um, Lissandra won 51% of the time, so 26-25, which is coin flip. Which, given the fact that Ari was so highly prioritized, that's pretty close, right? We knew Lissandra was the counter to Ari, so it makes sense. Talia versus Ari. Ari had a 58% win rate. Talia being the hot pick in the beginning and kind of being sprinkled in throughout the last you know, several weeks, but really not being relevant. Um, Azir versus Ari, 45 times. Azir, 56% of the time, winning. Um, Azir, towards the end, was really becoming quite a pick. Quite a power pick throughout playoffs, being banned or first picked. Silas versus Ari, 39 times. Silas winning 54%. Silas became a monster towards the end. We see it here. Silas versus Azir, 63%. Silas being first pick or ban, just like Azir. Um, some people decide to leave them both up, and you see here, right now, 63% of the time, Silas has the edge, um, and that's overall spring, so, and Azir's about to get nerfed, so Azir will drop out of meta, maybe, but um, right now, it clearly is Ari and what you want to pick into it in mid lane, um, and actually, when it's when Azir's up, it has the edge, um, Talia being picked into it probably doesn't make any sense, um, but... Mid lane, definitely you see here the lowest amount of, um, you know, most common matchup had the lowest amount at 51. So it was the most spread out, you know, you know, group because you have people picking maybe Galio and then Rise or, or TF. And, you know, those three are kind of on their own. You've got Silas, you've got Victor and Oriana coming into play now, LeBlanc. I mean, there's a Swain. Swain was a power pick in the beginning too. And, and it didn't end up on here. It fell out of favor pretty quickly. 80 carry, our handshake was Sivir versus Zeri. Um, I looked back at Spring. It was 380 times we saw Jinx versus Aphelios. 380. It doesn't make any sense, actually. I feel like it's supposed to be 180. Because, I mean, 380 would mean... I mean, I have to really double check. Um, one second. Because if you really think about it, 115, 380, I mean... It's possible. I remember, I think it was like Zaya versus Jinx or something happening only like 40 times, maybe 30 times. It's the second most common, which would mean 380 is possible. And they just left Jinx and Felios up every game. Um, I have to look back at it. But 115, Sivir versus Zeri. Um, Sivir won 51%. So this was coin flip, which is a surprise because we think of Zeri and we think, oh my God, OP, destroying everything, especially when she was like really dominant. And before Sivir got buffed, that was the case. But once Sivir was reworked, Sivir comes into the meta and actually, you know, wins a couple patches against Zeri actually outright. And then over the aggregate, it's 51%. Jinx versus Aphelios was common. Once again, Jinx versus Aphelios, like I said, was the most common matchup in spring. Aphelios winning 52%, so pretty much a coin flip. Callista versus Aphelios was common. Callista coming back in the meta, winning 54% of the matchups. We had... 26 bot laners chosen um, when it was a Senna bot lane for the most part I had the fasting Senna as the AD carry even though she plays support in lane she deals more damage usually than the person that's you know if it's a Tom Kench obviously Senna's still the AD and Tom Kench is just like a massive tank so um, you know what I'm getting at here um, so 
for the for the the champion alongside Senna, it was under support. I mean, outside of TK, really, were we getting a lot? Maybe Seraphine. Besides that, it was like sporadic things. Oh, a Yasuo here and Orn, um, Sejuani, things like that. Um, so Callista, fifty-four percent of her Felios. 48, per, 48 uh, picks were Lucian versus Zeri. Zeri winning 56%. Towards the end, Lucian was kind of really making a push there. Um, we figured out if Zeri doesn't have the Yumi, she's not as powerful. But Zeri's still the edge over Lucian over the four major regions. And then lastly, 38 times Lucian versus Aphelios. Lucian won 71%. Yeah. I feel like my numbers have to be wrong, right? No way was it 71% and people still picked in to the damn thing. I mean, it's, that'd be pretty, pretty int, right? I feel like that's pretty int if you're a pro coach and you're drafting and you determined to yourself, I'm going to pick a Felios into Lucian. Or pick a Felios and leave Lucian up. If the, if the win rate is that strong, I mean, I understand there's a lot of variables, but 70% is pretty one-sided. Um, there'd have to be a lot of things going wrong, a hurricane, a tornado going through the rift to really try and make me think that that was, oh, wow, how did that happen? Um, clearly Lucian has the edge over Aphelios. Support, 45 supports. Uh, most, you know, eccentric thing, obviously with Son of Bot Lanes, it was a thing. We saw some crazy stuff as well. Um, a Lee Sin and a Camille, a Heimerdinger, a J4. Um, I mean, the list goes on and on of things that we saw in bot lane. Um, 58 times, Nami versus Lulu. Nami winning two-thirds of the time, 66%. Pretty damn high. Goes to show you about this Lucian deal. Lucian Nami is a powerful, powerful bot lane. Um, ban it if you can't play it, and some teams can't play it. Yumi versus Lulu. Lulu won 51%. That's a surprise, too. You'd probably expect Yumi to have the edge, but Lulu actually had it and it, at best you can say yumi versus lulu is a coin flip pretty crazy to think about um brahm versus nautilus our tank matchup that was kind of under the radar all split long right never the most common matchup but something that people picked all along um brahm 55 percent and then when renata was the hot pick uh nautilus versus renata happened 37 times tom kench versus renata happened 35 times renata having the edge in both renata winning 57% against Nautilus and 60% against TK. So that was 21 to 14, I believe. So the thing is, um, Renata clearly had the edge. And Yumi wasn't as powerful as we thought over the whole entire thing. Which is something to think about, right? Because we think of it being a super powerful pick, but really over the entire thing, it really was kind of like, okay, coin flip. Um, and that's kind of the way I look at, wanted this. that's why I want to do these videos. You know, and there's a possibility that I was wrong. I mean, I'll be more than this. If someone goes back into the stats and says, oh, you were wrong on this and that, I'll be like, okay, well, I looked at like thousands of numbers over two days. So, uh, you know, yeah. I mean, I could, I'm not going to demonetize my video, but yeah. So um, it's really cool to look at this. So it's cool to look at it and think about it and be like, oh, this is interesting. Um, these videos are definitely not the most successful on the channel, but ones I enjoy doing the most. I love numbers. I love analytics of things like this, even though it may be just, you know, really, you know, a wide lens view because there are so many variables, but I really enjoy doing content like this. Um, so put a lot of effort into this. Uh, I imagine not a lot of people are going to see it because it's coming out late at night, but I wanted to get this sucker out. So it's done. Um, thank you for watching this video. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel for daily League of Legends content. Comment down below what which one of these matchups is your favorite. Um, are any surprising you based on the entire um, summer split? Um, you know, uh, follow me on Twitter. Join the Discord. Uh, become a YouTube member. Tomorrow, World's 2022 preview video will be about Fnatic, I think. I think Fnatic, so... Stay tuned for that, and thank you for watching.